I get a lot of questions about my video editing workflow from start to finish. So let's just jump right into this. I'm gonna pull up my Notion, which is where I organize my video ideas. It's where I drop my you know new ideas before I start planning them. And then I always know where to go to figure out what am I supposed to be working on right now? So in this case, I have a completely blank video idea. All I know is I've been getting questions about my video recording and editing workflow from start to finish. And that's what today's topic is. This stuff here at the top is kind of like just to help my content stay organized inside of Notion. It's really more the stuff down here that I need to start with when it comes to planning the video. So it's not sponsored, so I'm not gonna check that box. I know that the publish date is tomorrow. <laughs> We're cutting it close. I don't have a thumbnail designed yet. However, usually it's best practice to create your thumbnail and your title before you even record your video. So that's what we're going to do next. But first I need to figure out what I want my video title to be. So this is about my video workflow from start to finish. I'm not necessarily going for SEO. So there's not necessarily a keyword. Maybe video creation workflow is a keyword, but this is a question that you guys have been asking me. That's where I got the idea from, not through keyword research. So I think a really boring title would be something like my video creation workflow. I think a better title would be like my exact video creation workflow. I'm hesitant to say my exact video creation workflow because the next time I create a video, I'll do something different. One thing I like to do is to punch it up a little bit with one word that's all caps or one word that is in parentheses or something to kind of give it a little bit more of an impact. And then for my thumbnail, I'm going to go with something like this. I designed my thumbnails inside of Canva and I like to make my thumbnails work together with my title. So I don't usually repeat the same words, but they just kind of, they're cohesive. They work together. So I have my video title in here. I'm going to upload my thumbnail and the reason why I plan everything all in one place in Notion, including the thumbnail and the title and everything all in one place is because sometimes I get distracted by like email or I have to go pick a kid up from school or something. And when I know that I have one place where I know I just left off whatever I was working on, it's really helpful to me. Plus, over time, I i mean, I don't always plan and record my videos the day before I publish them. So in theory, having the thumbnail and the title and everything planned out in a batch where I can plan out three or four videos at a time and have everything here ready to go would be ideal. And in that case, it's really helpful to just already have the, the thumbnail figured out and the title figured out. So I obviously don't have the transcript or the URL yet. I'll put those in after the video is created. Sometimes I do write the video description at this point too. And now I actually think I have a better idea for this. Yeah, let's do that one. So as you can see, everything is a work in progress until it gets published. Now I can plan my actual video. So I have a template here where I can jot down some notes. This ideally, obviously I would be planning this video before I would be recording it, right? But this is where I can put down some ideas. So we're going to do planning in Notion and then recording steps, then editing steps. Those are sort of like the basic things that I know that I need to cover. I have another section here of my brainstorm helper, which covers a whole bunch of things that I teach inside of my membership. And I just put those there so that I, if I'm having trouble coming up with ideas for the video, I can just pop into my own content and my own resources that I give my clients and students. And then we have the script. So obviously I'm already recording this video, but for this, it's going to probably 
fit into my tutorial fill in the blank script. I actually don't have my intro written yet or recorded. I just jumped in and started recording. So I just wrote one sentence. I've got a lot of questions about my video creation workflow, blah, blah, blah. You already heard me say that. <laughs> and then I don't really need to rewrite my introduction because this fits. My name is Meredith. And then for the body content, this is just where if I needed to script the video word for word, I would put it here. So generally I do like to write the intro and anything that I need to say at the very beginning of the video. And then I will usually have an outline for the body content. The next section here, I call this a staging. I'm staging what I want to happen at the end of the video because there's a good chance that I have an idea of what I think you should watch next. And so I'm planning that in to my video before I actually hit record. So in this case, my build your thriving YouTube channel video that's at the top of my channel is going to be the next best video for you to watch after this. So I want to bake that call to action into this script. And then at the very end of the video, this is when I'm going to hand off to that lead getter video. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. So I just rewrote this a little bit to make it fit with this actual video topic. So that is the going to be my outro. So now it's time to actually record this video. And as you can see, I am already recording the video. So how does this work? I'm using Ecamm Live to record this video right now. And I'm also using my Stream Deck to uh, switch back and forth between like, say, my screen and my face. So I have a scene set up for this and then I can go back to just myself by just hitting the other button over here. So I have these programmed for those scenes. Now Ecamm is Mac only, but you could accomplish the same thing by using something like Riverside, or if you're using Descript and you have a really simple setup, you can record directly into Descript with your camera or your webcam, or even with your phone. Plus Descript bought Squadcast, which is a way of recording in the browser so you don't even need any of this software. I just like Ecamm because I can create these scenes and it's just kind of like my go-to for a simple record myself, record my screen, talk to the camera kind of a setup. Now I just hit stop record and I have about a 30 minute long file of me fumbling my way through planning a video before I've planned the video. So I'm going to share my screen with you here so that we can pop ourselves over into Descript. And I'm just going to start a new project, new video project. And we're going to upload our file. So while that's happening, if there is anything you learned new so far, make sure you hit the like button and follow me here for more video creation workflow tips. And if you're creating videos to grow your audience and your channel here on YouTube, then my best YouTube growth strategy is coming up. So now that Descript has got everything transcribed, I'm left with just words. And I have my timeline down here at the bottom. The first thing I always do when I'm editing is do a rough draft or a rough cut of what I have here. And so what that means is I start at the top and I get rid of all of my mistakes. I get rid of anything that I messed up my words or restarted my words which happens, you know, 17 times in every single video. You can see right here at the top, I say, so let's jump into this. I plan my videos instead of Notion. I have, okay, so let's jump into this. And I still have to go back and record the intro. So where I have these blank dots, that's just where there's no talking happening. And I usually edit those out, but for the sake of time, I am gonna open up the Underlord and go to shorten word gaps. It's going to look for anything that's a half a second or more and shorten it to a half a second. So I'm going to get, go ahead and do all that. Shorten all. It just took our 30 minute video 
and brought it down to 17 minutes. Because, you know, there's a lot of gaps where I'm like setting things up and, you know, getting my scenes in Ecamm all set up and everything. And I could go through and ask Descript to edit for clarity. This is a fairly new feature, so I haven't really been using it in my workflow because basically I'm editing for clarity. You know what I mean? Like I'm going through the script and getting rid of the places where I repeat myself or something that just doesn't make sense and I'm doing it myself. So in this case though, we're going to let Descript do it and see how it works. We went from a 17 minute video down to a 14 minute, 14 minutes, 40 seconds. So essentially what I'm doing now is I'm going to watch the video and edit it as I go. So it took me roughly about a half an hour ish to get through this and create my rough draft. And one thing I want to mention is I follow a video editing process. I like to call the BFF method. BFF could stand for best friend forever, best video creation friend forever, but it's actually basic, fine tune and fancy. So that's the actual order that I go in when I'm editing my videos. We start with a basic edit, which is what I just did. It's the rough draft. I get rid of the mistakes and make sure the video flows the way that it is. And then I start to fine tune it, which means going in to places where I have, you know, made a cut and trimming to make sure that the transition from one cut to the next is smooth. And, um, and palatable to the viewer, you know, to the ear, make sure that it sounds natural. So I make a lot of cuts because I make a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of cuts in here. You can see them all. And I, as I'm editing, usually when I'm doing the rough edit, I fine tune, but you want to be really careful that you're not fine tuning things that you end up cutting later on. So basic is your rough edit, and then you fine tune your rough edit so that what you're left with is pretty much ready to go except for a couple of fancy things. Now there is a fine line between fine tuning and fancy. Fine tuning is making the video as good as it is as it is, meaning it's good enough to publish without spending a bunch of time doing fancy stuff like adding sound effects and um, and animations and graphics and B-roll and um, I don't know, transitions and titles and captions and background music. Those things should be added in to enhance your video and help convey what it is that you're trying to convey to the audience, not just to look cool, I guess. And don't get me wrong, it's fun to do fancy stuff and a lot of times I pull my videos into Premiere Pro, but lately, if it's good to go just in Descript with basic edits, then it's good to go. So you always wanna do the fancy stuff last because you don't wanna do fancy stuff on parts of your video that you end up cutting out. So my rough cut is done, my fine tuning of the rough cut is done, but I haven't recorded my intro yet, so I need to do that and pop this in before we do any fancy stuff. Okay, my intro has been recorded. I put that in at the very top. I recorded it in Ecamm, took the file, added that in, and then I also recorded my outro, which you're gonna see in just a minute. So we have our rough cut, we have our fine tuning. I don't have any B-roll for this video, but I do have some lower thirds. I actually didn't end up using the, you know, my name is Meredith, blah, blah, blah. So I don't have a spot for my Meredith Marsh uh, lower third. We're going to add it in anyway. I'm going to come up here to projects and then upload. And then I'm just going to pull my lower third file in, which is already animated. We'll pop this in here. Actually, I'm going to move it to this spot. I don't really have much else to put in here as far as fancy stuff. I could pull this into Premiere Pro and add in a few like graphics and transitions and things like that. But to be honest, I 
I got to publish this video tomorrow. So I kind of just want to get it done. This is a simple edit. It was a simple recording and I like creating simple videos. So I'm going to give this video one more run through beginning to end and watch it like a viewer and just make sure everything is fine and ready to go. And then when I'm done, I'll come up here to the top right, go to publish. And what I've been doing lately is just hitting export, make sure it's on maximum resolution. And then I just export it as it is. And since I already have my thumbnail and my title ready to go, because we did that in the planning phase, then uploading it is going to take me like just however long it takes to actually upload the video. And I'll schedule it for tomorrow morning. Now that you know my easy start to finish video creation workflow using Descript, I hope that creating videos is going to go quicker for you and smoother for you because honestly, the more videos you can upload to YouTube, the faster your channel is going to grow. The name of the game is to create a library of binge worthy videos. And if you want my best tips for creating a library of binge worthy videos and grow your channel so that every single video that you publish actually gets views and gains subscribers. I'll link to that video up here for you now.